We have the blue goblin player, Sauron, at the bottom side, against the red elven player, Ave Helvi, at the top side. Who is building up our early barracks after the first Malone 3. We see two tunnels coming up for the goblin player into the potential goblin cave. So I believe this matchup can go really either way. And I also believe the same situation like for the dwarven faction that goblins are like a very snowbally faction. You know, when you get a lead, you can build multiple tunnels and pressure non-stop. And it will be kind of difficult for the elven player to deal with this swarm of the goblins. But if you end up defending yourself in the first couple of minutes, like 5 to 10 minutes, you can scale really hard into the mid to late game as elves. Because, you know, the elven archer unit is countering almost everything what the goblin faction has to offer. You know, like goblins getting countered. Obviously, cave trolls getting countered. Pikemen are getting countered. That means the only possible counter you have as goblins against elves is like either you have like a huge army advantage you have like five goblins against one unit or you have like spider riders and you are hoping to get a beautiful trample off that's the only bad from sauron let's see if he can you know make it done with two tunnels into the double goblin cave right after that one and the third tunnel is going to be built up offensively that's the eric stone from the map and we have elven archer unit and they are going for the creep so with the build up they will be using the builder as like a it's like a bait and then the creep is going to be secured no problemo that means additional experience power points and also money for the Elven faction player Ave Havi, who is now recruiting his second Elven Archer. I think in this situation, what you can do as Elves is expand offensively. Like, what I'm trying to say with that is simple. What's gonna happen from Sauron? Sauron is gonna try to build tunnels here, 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 you know, and attack you around your fortress all the time. But if you expand, for example, here, if you go for a sneaky Malone tree and hide it around this side, there is a chance that Sauron is not going to be able to discover this, you know, Malone tree for a really long time. For example, here too. Maybe here. Hide them. You don't need to go for the full percentage, you know, you don't need to go for the maximum amount of value from the resource income, but you can this way keep your command points high enough to be able to keep recruiting more and more units. So for now, he is going for the goblins and that's going to be the first push. So we have like one, two goblins into the war chant. Remember the war chant in the goblin faction? gives you also 10 person movement speed just like for the Isengard faction but even with the war chant you full get one shotted remember the war chant doesn't give you any armor right it means it gives you it gives you only a burst like a burst of a damage and to be precise it gives you 40 percent damage and also the poison blades is applying on the damage output against the structures and even now look at that he was not even able to take it down that's how hard counter the arches are that was really close by the way but for this attack, he was committing fully with Warchan, with a bunch of goblins, and it was defended with two archers without any buff on them. He was using the foresight, which is also extending the range of the archers by 25%. Now, trust me, as Ave needs to know now and understand, okay, Sauron will definitely try to finish off this Malone tree. So maybe he can set up an ambush, you know? And talking about ambush, that's like a specialty we from the Elven faction the because they are able to get invisible around the trees. You, don't, you won't even get the chance to see them on the minimap anymore. They are hiding completely. They are invisible for the enemy until they get really close to them or until they start shooting. More goblins are swarming out from the bottom side. Elves, they are kind of body blocking this buff pathway, creeping the spider layer at the very same time with the archers. They are going to hit at level 3 very, very soon. And once again, the goblins are getting kind of crushed. In a few seconds, archers are trying to kind of kill them before they can make it to the small on tree, which is like one shot away from getting destroyed. We have a fight in the middle, Lorien warriors were able to take down we the tunnel. Swords from, Lorien. swords from Lorien. You will need Lorien warriors, obviously, to be able to destroy the tunnels, because yes, the elven archers are able to creep the lair by themselves, but they don't deal any damage to the enemy structures. So you need some sort of DPS, either Lorien warriors, lances from Rivendell, or the pikemen, the Miflons. Creeping the spider lair, getting more and more power points, 5 power points almost collected, 400 command points available, 500 command points available, but only one power point collected. The first counter attack on the tunnel level 1, tunnel is the squishiest building in the entire game with 1000 HP, and this is gonna take it down. Uh, Yona Cosino, thanks for the 100 bitty bomb, my dude. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for the huge spot, thanks, appreciate that. Means a lot. 500 command points available, the goblins were running it down into the troll area, and they won't be able to achieve too much. Lorien warriors. Archers all around the place, the steeple now up on the field for even a better counter to the goblin spam. Archers are fighting, look, they can even fight you in a melee range in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Level 4 archers don't lose them, but can you even disengage? But that is com there comes the backup. 
Remember the Elven units, that's like a passive thing. They can heal up over time. They don't need a well. They don't need like a Mirror of Galadriel or anything like that to be able to heal up. They can heal up, you know, out of combat. Anyway, two power points, only 550 command points. Yes, but he has not that many units on the field. 500 command points. And I like the Elven gameplay here. He's expanding slowly, you know, making smart steps. Those steps, if you make them smart enough, can carry you to the victory. And this way, uh, we have will get a great chance of winning this series. I mean, the score is not looking great, but it's far from being over. It is not over until it's over, guys. The tunnel is going to be taken down next. There is nothing we the Alvin play can do about. He has spider the riders on the field. And that's the moment in which Avi now has to start recruiting multiple pikemen. And one pikeman isn't enough. Like, ideally, you want to make, you know, better safe than sorry, guys. Like, get a second one on the field. Just we why run not? From this way, you don't need to micro non-stop. The tunnel here is going to be found as well. And taking down the spider riders are making it on the field. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Nice one here from Sauron. What a cleanup. The one pikeman cannot cover every single archer. It's not possible. That's why you need at least a second one. For each squad of your Lorian archers, you want to have like its bare minimum one, ideally even two pikemen to spot them. And you realize the enemy is going, oh, the builder. Not the builder. Not the builder. <laughs> oh, run. Yeah, but the buds are you out? Oh, yeah, baby. Not even close. Lorian warriors are fast, though. They, are they fast enough to catch them? That's the question. Don't take this route. Okay, there comes the troll, but the builder has been slain. That's worth it. Like, if you lose, hold on a second. Hold on. He watches. He's paying attention. Okay. 550 command points. He's almost command points capped. The Elven play. He has almost 9 power points collected after the far side. And on the other side, we have almost 4 power points collected for Pigiron, also known as Sauron. And he has now Cave Trolls up on the field. Cave Trolls, level 1 fissure. That's the only unit you can recruit. Level 2 is required if you want to be able to recruit those Half Troll Marauders. The Half Troll Pikeman unit from the Goblin Faction. Put an end to this evil. The tunnel here has been taken down as well. Um, we have a squad of, uh, the, uh, from, of the Alvin army at the bottom side. The builder, the second one. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. That's painful. Two builders in like 30 seconds. That's like the worst case, literally. Oh, that's painful because now he got to re revive them. They cost a bit less from than from other factions. They normally cost 450. They cost 400, but 400 is still a lot of money. Nice shot. Sit down. With the tree, he was picking up an ant from the Fangon Forest. Oh, the charge into the pikeman with the with the spider riders. The power points are rising to the sky from both the players. Beautiful trample is coming in from many, many ants at the same time. The pikemen are you know recovering now. The troll is badly damaged. Can he get away? Alvin Wood will be placed. Remember, the Alvin Wood cannot be covered by the tainted land. The sun is rising, boys. He's gonna go for the key pads. Alvin Wood is a massive boost of the Alvin army for additional armor. And increase 35% increase dam armor and 25% increase damage. That's even better than what you get from a high tier hero leadership. But as you can see, you know, overrides leadership effects from the allies. That means you cannot have this and anything else active at the same time. But it's okay. You know, what you get from the Alvin Wood is already good enough. Lorian archers ready for battle. Lorian archers ready for battle. And keep in mind that the Alvin units, once again, are able to get we invisible around the place. So the Alvin Wood in this situation is even double effective, you know? In the, the campy situation now, you can just sit here in front of the production buildings eventually and kill everything as they coming out of the production buildings. Like a really rough situation. Lancers against Spider Riders. But they are getting outnumbered, and they are also getting now kind of flanked from the enemy archers. Creeping action is going on at the bottom side offensively from the Pikeman and Lorian Warriors. The work layer is going to be secured by Ave Havi. The power points are literally skyrocketing. 700 command points in the bank, 500 only for the goblins. And that's what I was trying to say at the beginning of the game. You know, goblins are a snowball faction, yes. But if you fall behind, it's really hard to play against elves. Like, he has literally every unit he needs. He needs a bit more archers eventually, you know, to be able to burst down the skiff trolls fast enough. Like, one or two archers is not going to do the magic trick. Beautiful uh, catching here from the spider riders. Lorian archers were still able to get away. With the well, they can recover. No heroes yet, but that's about to be changed. We have Haldir on the field as the first hero of the game number five. Haldir is nice because he offers you the damage leadership, which again, I believe against skiff trolls, what you need is damage. You want to be able to burst them down before they can reach out we to you with your archers. And also, Hydra can keep shooting at them all the time. One, three already. Yeah, we started the streamer with earlier today. Arsenal, welcome. 
five power points collected for everybody who was just tuning in we have one minute delay in the stream just to make it a bit more competitive you know just to avoid discussions like oh this guy was stream sniping me he knew what i'm doing and stuff like this one minute doesn't seem to be a much long time but it is definitely effective trust me Haldir is fighting with the sword the spider riders are putting pressure that's good that's what you are supposed to do you know kind of draw attention and keep them away from your own settlement during all this time Avi is creeping literally everything what is left on the map Erech the fourth age beside the spider layer here and the troll layers here and here the goblin layers are, this one is also remaining on the field he didn't pick up the money sometimes in a in a choke point like that the treasure is actually dropping in a spot where you can't pick it up you know it's annoying you cannot pick it up okay counter attack now from the top side spider riders are getting away they are avoiding i mean sauron is a really really amazing player i'm legolas of the mirgur elves boom legolas is the second hero we have now a double archer hero on the field higher and legolas they can keep shooting those trolls all the time and also more levels means more dps right so basically you can train archers with level three be a knife fighter with level 5 and then the arrow wind with level 10 for crazy dps the tunnel is going to be found pikemen are not the best unit against the resource buildings but the exception is the tunnel because once again the tunnels are so squishy that even i think lumber mill workers can take it down literally in like 10 seconds couple people the tunnel here is going to be found too 10 power points collected after the alvin woods uh, you gotta find a solution now to the to the spider riders you know what i'm saying i think he just you know they are drawing lots of attention and kind of the elven player is losing his momentum and that's kind of worrying me you know what i'm saying because the goblin faction now has i mean he's down still like 350 command points down power points wise are he's down but it was looking even worse for sauron like two minutes ago and he's kind of recovering up a little bit the third hero is going to be arvin so three heroes to rule them all three for the elven three rings to the elven immortals boom hoax strike on the spider riders does he have scavenger yeah he has scavenger i was wondering where is the money dropping from scavenger is not a bad call imagine you kill everything i think if you kill everything around this and you would get literally so much money the scavenger is so valuable when it comes to kill heroes like legolas for example it will drop you so much additional money the malone tree almost level three is going to be found in the stable look at the commitment boom son the damage is crazy dude the pikeman damage against production buildings guys i'm telling you this is nuts and uh, not even close baby <laughs> dude guys if i would get peed every time i see a building with zero hp one dollar i would have been a millionaire by now trust me arvin is moving from the top side arvin is also a leadership for the for the nearby cavalry one she's level three for increased armor and combat experience to make them a bit more tanky the stable was barely able to survive and we have 850 the elven wood is available once again 725 command points collected for sauron he's recovering that's what i'm saying 775 command points now he has a bunch of spider riders trolls they cannot be underestimated many lenses i think that's a little bit too many lenses for my personal opinion he could have just gotten some more archers on the field one of them is level five legolas is now level almost two I think the perfect placement of the Alvin Wood would be here. Like, use it here in front of the production buildings. You know what I'm saying? Then you can get the chance to come in on this tunnel and on this tunnel level 3. It's the only level 3 tunnel the Goblin player has up on the field. But he's now building multiple arrow towers and going for a counter attack from the top side. Okay, so Elrond could be a nice hero. Definitely, yeah. Elrond, definitely a good choice. But again, expensive choice. He's holding on his Alvin Wood. Level 2 Malone 3 has zero protection on it. It will be eventually taken down. He has nothing to defend himself. That's why he's also building up so many additional arrow towers around the fortress. Maybe even a Floodgate expansion could be actually a great call. Five power points collected. He might go for a Tainted Land if he wants to. But also offers you additional armor buff. Uh, Arvin is level 2. Level 3 is required. Trample them down. Get more and more experience. I think he's... Yeah, he has Eagles now. Okay eagles are being special summoned defensively oh that's gonna be nice because he will get the chance now to kill the trolls even though the trolls are kind of resistant no never mind i take it back they die quite soonish against the eagles okay nice 
And the thing is, when you summon something like that, you even get more power opens collected from this, right? That's such a great summon. You can use them to kill the buildings. You can use them to kill heroes, to kill units. They are greatly good against everything. Building supplies are here. Building supplies here. The eagles. The eagles. The eagles are coming. They will be able to see this tunnel and look at this like three hits and it's going to be destroyed. The spider riders are dying too. Hydra is getting more and more experience. Level 2 is unlocked. This Legolas is also level 2. But more levels are required to build them. That's the third build I see him losing. But it looks like Sauron is going to be barely able to save him. The level 3 tunnel is an open area, but he has some pikemen, archers, and goblin warriors inside of that. He has to actually try to defend this, that's very important. 700 command points for elves and 625 for goblins. But when you take a look into the minimap, it looks definitely great for the elven faction at this point. Like he's expanding here with an end mood offensively, building towers around the end mood to keep it protected in a safe spot. And then the siege is gonna begin. But can he afford it? He has not that much money yet. I mean, the ends, they are not very cheap either. You know what I'm saying? They cost like 800 each. And the tree build costs even 1500 each. So, I mean, not each, not each because you can only have one tree build at the same time. He's a hero at the end of the day. But the ends damage against the fortress is meh. You know, that's why you need more than one end if you want to be able to t be taken seriously from your opening. Because the one end can be literally ignored for like a bit. And you don't need to react fast enough. So having like two, even, even three ends, you know, kind of shooting at your fortress is going to draw the attention from Sauron and he will have to react. How close is he to Watcher? I mean, he has nine power points only. So he needs still six power points for the 15. And six power points can be a lot of stuff because I don't think he will get the chance to kill a lot. Like, look at the protection. Do you see that? Multiple towers, you know, two towers from the right. Now two towers in the front. Maybe we can build another one. Like have crazy protection for this, for this area. Play some archers inside like he did. This one has archer inside. You can even you know get the silverton arrows like he did for 300 additional resources. You can make them shoot and hit like a truck. Uh, yeah, level three. So I think the Alvin player is kind of going for a for a safe victory. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to take a full risk, which kind of makes sense for me. If you are three one behind, you wanna wanna play it safe. You don't want to take a really unnecessary risk which can backfire and make you lose the game because this game at this point i think it's gonna be hard for sauron to turn this around Haldir, what are you doing bro Haldir, don't dive in too deep or he's paying attention he's gonna get in safety big fight around the bottom side maybe he needs an older keyboard <laughs> the sound effects are not working for whatever reason guys sorry for that Okay, nice commitment with the lancers. He's putting pressure on the economy, trying to kind of keep the money income as low as possible. The siege happening, the fortress, and even three beard doesn't deal too much damage to the fortress, as you can see, right? So he needs like to shoot it at bare minimum twenty times, if not more. That's why you need additional ends, and that's gonna be finally the case. Remember, the three beard is also able to give you additional range and armor, as well as movement speed and even experience. So range is very important, which gives you the chance to shoot from downtown. Look at the range. And now the commitment. But can you take him down fast enough? Weapon of Dunland Special Summon into the war chance. He's tanky against the Swordman. You need to have Pikemen to be able to burst him down or fire. But the white men they don't do much because there is a tower with silverton arrows in it. Spider Riders. Actually, towers are so squishy in this game, right? 1,000 health only. You can kill them so extremely fast. What? He's going to call it GG though. And that's it. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, the score after the game number 5 is going to be 3-2. Still in favor of Sauron, but now we have seen Avi winning two games in a row. So we have at bare minimum two more games if Sauron is able to win this game. At least three more games if Avi will be able to win this game. We have still many, many games to be done with. And that's what I'm expecting from my grand finals. Pretty back and forth, close. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, Avi is definitely able to win against Sauron. So we have the red goblin player Avi Havi at the top side against the blue goblin player Sauron at the bottom side. The last bridge. Looks like that. It's a pretty bright and beautifully designed map. With, of course, troll layers being included. Like, troll layer is like a standard creep for almost every single map. And they are most of the time guarding those inns, which you can capture to recruit additional units, depending on your faction. For example, dwarves get the chance to recruit hobbits. Man gets the chance to recruit some elven warriors and so on. 
what happened uh, with the bad shanks i don't know gluva uh, need to ask uh, balindru what happened with the bats balindru two tunnels into the goblin cave into the third tunnel coming up for sauron on the other side we see two tunnels three tunnels and also into the goblin cave coming up for ave have so it's pretty much like a you know like an identical opening for both the players in the game number six and no excuses i mean it's a goblin mirror match but let me tell you i believe ave used to be a goblin one trick player for a long time even in rise of the witch king there was a time he was always picking the goblin faction so i'm assuming ave should have enough experience with the goblin faction you know what i'm saying so we shall see okay so two against two it's gonna be a goblin spam early on but i believe that's one of the matchups which will end up being like a troll war you know like we will at least see 20 cave trolls i'm assuming in total in this game so cave trolls against cave trolls might might and will definitely happen i lag <laughs> it was laggy for a single second i hope it's gonna be all right the goblins are coming from the bottom side it's a macro elastic gameplay right so it's about expanding it's about hiding those tunnels it's about putting pressure from multiple pathways it's about swarming and surrounding and whoever gets a lead will have a huge advantage into turning this lead into a instant victory another defensive tunnel coming up for Avi Havi. sauron is expanding at the top side so top right close to the trolley I mean, last bridge, this map is looking kind of big, but it is not that big, guys. Look, what I'm trying to say is like, you have three pathways, right? So you have one, one pathway here in the middle, like a big one, one pathway bottom and one pathway middle. So you cannot cross anything else, right? I mean, I think you can also use the bridge. If I'm not mistaken, you can go over the bridge. But again, when you expand wisely and you place like tunnel here, here and here, you get the chance to see literally all the possible entrances from the opening player to your side of the map. So expanding wisely in a map like this and blocking these choke points, these pathways might give you a great control of this game. Goblins, uh, first attack from Sauron, but you have Goblin Archers on the field for the defense. The tunnel is going to be surrounded. Again, tunnel is the squishiest building in the game. 1000 HP, can't withstand lots of DPS. Goblins are using the Bombard ability, which is very smart. They did use it at least, and that's going to be enough. If the cave pets, he was also able to make them weaker and keep this tunnel protected. Goblin archers literally everywhere. They can also use the poison arrows for like a like a burst damage, which also causes the enemy units, heroes or whatever, take damage over time. And Ave is kind of kind of playing it a bit more defensively. Like he's expanding slowly. You know what I'm saying? Kind of in a in a predictable uh, way, in a defendable way. You know, while Sauron is actually the one who is taking a risk by building offensive tunnels and going for a commitment. Now the first big counter attack might happen. With Goblin Archers, Goblin Warriors, let's see if they can achieve something. There is a tunnel with Goblin Archers inside of that. And maybe Spider Riders could be a nice choice, but I think Fissure into the Cave Trolls is the best call. And that's gonna be the case already for Sauron, right? He was already building up the Fissure and will be recruiting the first Cave Troll of the game. They cost 600 E, so losing them is kind of painful. And the thing about Trolls in Battle for Middle Earth 2 is they are great against units, against even heroes, but they are kind of meh against buildings. So they won't deal too much damage to the to the tunnels, not too much damage to the you know goblin caves and so on. I mean they still deal damage, don't get me wrong, but they can't burst them down fast enough. Which kind of makes sense because they would make them kind of to the most OP unit in the entire game if they could. Yeah, I don't I don't know guys. I mean double elimination means literally that you I mean I mean there are many many ways you can execute that. But for me, personally, it means that double elimination would mean that you have a second life, you know? You have a second life. Avik lost already against Inumara in the quarterfinals, and he dropped down. So he lost his first life. But Sauron didn't. Sauron didn't lose a series yet, until now, until the grand finals. So if he loses, he also loses one of his lives and has a second life, a second chance. That's the double elimination. You can lose twice to be eliminated. The cave trolls are on the field now, but I believe pick up a tree, guys. Pick up a tree. The troll with the red pants. Pick up a tree and bully them. Tree is the best way to fight this. Because it gives you like the splash damage and the opportunity to hit multiple units at the same time. This is going down for sure, yes. Big commitment on this tunnel too. Sauron is actually doing a great work with the goblins. And there is also a counter attack, right? He will be able to find this tunnel. 
the cave troll is coming but i'm assuming he won't be there in time and the cave uh, this tunnel is going to be destroyed more goblins coming from the bottom side the cave troll from sauron was taking so much damage from the goblin warriors for whatever reason but he will get away and he's level four that means he has to sustain over time and also gorkil the goblin king might be actually an effective hero in this situation because if you don't know gorkil has leadership which also applies on them on the cave trolls you know healing them up faster in this way you can have the sustain uh, to keep your trolls eventually alive all game long hey shanks hey nikki how are you doing, Nikki? Thanks for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to see you in the chat. Uh, 500 command points available for Ave Havi and 450 command points available for Sauron. 9 power points collected and 7 power points collected. What is happening? <laughs> Nature of X going live, reading, going offline, reading again. Thanks for, thanks for it, Nature of X. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Thanks for the raid anyway. Appreciate that. All right, Goblin Archers coming from the middle. Cave Troll here. Um, 600 command points available for Ave and 550. So it's pretty evenish. Ave is kind of making sure to move from each pathway. That's the way you want to do that. But that's a Wildman of Tunnel and Summon offensively. Okay. Cave Pads will be used to make them weaker. But I guess the level 2 tunnel is not going to make it alive. Remember, they have the Pillage ability, which means they get money every time they deal damage to enemy buildings. But these trolls are slapping them. Boom, boom, boom. Nice splitting here. Very smart uh, with the Wildman of Talent. By pressing X on your keyboard, you can order your army to be splitted, which can in many situations be a great tool. For example, you are clumped in a, in a choke point like that and your opponent is casting like Arrow Wally, you know what I'm saying from the spell book. And you see the animation coming through. All you can do, all you need to do is, you know, select all your units and press X on your keyboard and they will start automatically into running into different directions. This way you can split them up way faster than microing them individually one by one, you know? So make use of the shortcuts which are giving to you. That they are very important. Like, for example, sending, uh, you know, putting pathways. Like, you can command your unit with Alt, you see? With Alt, you can say them, go here first, and here, then here, then here. And you can this way micro way, way easier. The troll was able to get away level 4. This one is also level 4. They are diving in. Many, many goblin arches on the field. Maybe use poison arrows to burst them down fast enough. That's what I'm talking about. The trolls are beefy. They don't die that fast. That's why you eventually will need some half troll pikemen to counter that and to protect your archers. This one is going to be die dying though. Smart move. Splitting them out. And kind of leaving the troll in an open area in which he's surrounded. And will not be able to fight this any longer. The trolls are diving in. Aves trolls have trees in their hands. Unlike the trolls from Sauron. Sauron's trolls, they care about the nature. They don't want to just, you know, kind of grab a tree and destroy the ecosystem. That's not what they are paid for. The troll is smashing the tunnel level too. But that's what I'm talking about. You see the damage is kind of meh. You need to hit it multiple times to take it down. Even though the building is extremely squishy. Okay. More... Um, pressure are we actually playing a great goblin faction game right now guys in the game number six and remember he was 3-0 behind he won now the past two games in a row and he has a high chance of winning this one as well let me tell you that much guys and that would be a phenomenal <laughs> kind of comeback like being 3-0 behind and making this score even in the best of nine is pretty impressive eight power points collected war chan has been used on the spider riders beautiful trample there is no punishment there is nothing that can deal with the spider riders great get away Warchant is going to be used also on the Goblin Arches now, but they are getting slowed down. You don't want to be charging in too much to lose your movement speed and to lose your crush declaration. Basically, if you are being slowed down, you can't crush them anymore. You can't trample them down anymore. That's why you want to go small, small tramples, like trample and get out, trample and get out. Multiple tunnels being built next to each other, but Sauron is demolishing them all. He cannot keep them alive. 750 command points for Ave, Ave, 450 for Sauron, 5 power points collected. But when I've done it, it's on cooldown. And we have four power points collected also for Ave after the Keith Pets, the Warchan, and Weapon of Talent, which also is on cooldown. Many, many, many more goblins are swarming out. We have a troll, cave troll. You know, actually, Sauron is kind of with the Spider Riders now doing some stuff. However, he needs to find a solution now to this cave trolls from Ave. Have a boom, nice shot. Sit on your feet. More, more, more cave trolls. Spam them all day, boy. All day. You know what would be a game-breaking point? And that's my personal opinion, I think. Drogov. You know, when you get Drogov on the field, imagine how useless those trolls, trolls would become. You can literally fish trolls for dinner. 
you know you can kill them every single time they make a move and with Drogov, you have such a control of the game as he's a flying hero and goblins will struggle to be you know they need to be grouped in order to be able to burst him down if you don't burst him down he can just fly away and recover and come again and do the same what he does what he does all the time but again Drogov is an expensive hero and for now nobody has the advantage here comes trolls <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, here comes the trolls, boys. Let's go. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. The Comet Man. The Comet Man. Can he, has, has he the damage output to take down the fortress before the arrow towers are gonna handle them? I think they do. Look at this, boys. This troll, move. I think he doesn't even need to. One of them is gonna die 100%. But I think doesn't matter. The fortress from Sauron is going to be taken down by the troll army. And Sauron is literally getting trolled. And he's calling it GG. And what a phenomenal, phenomenal comeback from the Turkish player Ave Havi. Winning three games in a row. It's impressive. Dude, it's impressive. GG's. We have the blue Man of the West player Sauron at the top side. That's the first time we see Man of the West in this series. Against the red Elven player Ave Havi at the bottom side. We have two Malone trees coming up for elves and two farms coming up for the men of the West. $1,000 tournament between Shanks, between me and Shanks and Balindru, yes. So $1,000 tournament, but only three people are allowed. That's, Bal that's Balindru, Dimek, and me. And to make it fair and balanced, everyone is going to get $333.33. And 33 cents. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the plan. Two farms into the offensive barracks. I think he's aiming for it. Yeah, no, he's building the two. That's a barracks placement. Okay, so three farms into a more like a defensive kind of style. I, I don't know about this positioning of this barracks, to be honest with you guys. And we see on the other side, two Malone trees, three Malone trees, four Malone trees. It's an economical opening for the Alvin player Avi Havi in the game number seven. Guys, guys, I don't know what to say. It was 3-0 for Sauron and Avi end up winning three games in a row to make the score even, dead even. Into the barracks coming up right after that one. Okay, so what is the plan? Farsight has been used to see what's going on, and Human Wood has used to scout. Human Wood, besides scouting, also gives you 35% increased armor. Barracks into potential Lorian warriors or Lorian archers. We see a Gondor barracks into the Gondor soldiers, but I believe in this matchup we will need to also see some Rohirrim later on. The heroes we don't get the chance to see very often are Theorin and also Elma. Like those heroes we don't very we don't see very often, you know? Unlike in, in Rise of the Witch King, we see Elma almost every single time we see Man of the West faction. Here we see more like a Boromir kind of style, even Aragorn more often. But Theodin, I have not seen once. Gondor soldiers are moving on. I mean to be fair, we have not seen Man of the West faction too many times either. Because most of the time people are picking dwarves for each other. So we don't we, we can't really talk about Man of the West too much. Gondor soldiers. And Lorian Arches. And the stable is coming up for the for the album play at the same time. I think it's a great situation for Avi because he was going for the economical opening, but he didn't get punished for it. And by the time the Lorian, uh, the Gondor soldiers are coming, they will be forced to fight against the Arches. They are now in camouflage, invisible, around the trees. And look how much damage they will be able to deal before they can even reach out to Amalon tree. Run away, don't fight them in the melee range, maybe. He's fighting them in the melee range and waiting for the second unit, which also is gonna be a Lorian Archer Battalion. More farms are coming up for the Man of the West. And the stable behind. So you see the placement of the production buildings is kind of in a very strange order. In Gondor Knights, maybe not uh, Rohirrim yet. I think he cannot afford it for now. But later on, the Rohirrim, they are just feeling much more beefy. And more reliable in compared to the Gondor Knights. Obviously, they are also much more expensive. 200 for them. 200 differential. And also, um, you need to get it to level 2 first for 450. Archers, once again, catching those soldiers before they can do anything. Great situation for Ave Havi, Lorian Archers. Seems to be the one solution to solve all the problems from the Alvin faction. That's crazy. Hey, Raven, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. We have a builder here from the Alvin player, kind of scouting this area for whatever reason. Pretty dangerous to be there. Oh, the Gondor Knights and the punishment. Boom. One trample to rule them all, boys. Gondor Knights. The brave men. The hobbits from the Shire are escaping the Nazgûls. They are here. The wrong way, my friend. The wrong way. Lorian warriors are also getting found by the Gondor Knights. And all, one trample is all it takes to disable them. 
They are fast though. I mean, they are extremely slippery too. They are so fast. Forward. But they are not fast enough to escape the Gondonites. Ah. One shot. One opportunity. And Lancers now. Pikemen to counter. They've also defended Lancers on the field. They can also trample down the <coughs> Gondor soldiers. They need to do it now before the Malone tree is going to get destroyed. The Malone tree is one of the squishiest buildings. The farm is one of the tankiest buildings. 2,000 HP for the Man of Tuas farm. And Gondor soldiers, they are not doing anything in this situation so far. Maybe it's time to recruit some tower guards. Or maybe it's time for the Roh Rohirrim. There we go for the Rohirrim boys. The first Rohirrim battalion is on the field. And that's what I'm talking about. Elma or Theorin to make them a bit more stronger and more efficient would be a definitely a great call. But I guess, regardless, they will always be able to win in a one-on-one -on -one situation against the Revander Lancers. You can also use the bow from a safe distance and even shoot down at the enemy pikemen. Press on. Press on. This is the way. Spear them. It's Pantera, right? Pantera is back on the menu, boys. Pantera, long time no see. Forward. Forward. The Malone tree is going to be found and taken down. The farm is destroyed. The builder is getting barely in safety by building a wall hub. Should be in a fine spot. And now is the time for Sauron to make something happen with the Gondonites and Rohirrim. Because so far, not really a lot of economical damage dealt to the Elven player Ave Havi. He's holding himself quite nicely in the game number 7 too. 400 command points for Ave and 500 for man. Beautiful trample is incoming with the Rohirrim. Nice micro from Sauron. He's always on point with the micro. He can always avoid even Ophus, the pikeman, he can always take the risk and gets manages to get away with it, you know? Pretty impressive. But the farm here is still in zero protection, no archers to keep fighting against the enemy pikeman and Lorian warriors. And what is the solution to that? Maybe Boromir could be a nice choice because of the son of Gondor, you know, the Horn of Gondor. You have also leadership when you are level 4, if I'm not mistaken, or level 5. Faramir could be a nice choice. For now, great defense from Avi, keeping this Malone tree almost level to protect it. No heroes all game long, no Haldir, nothing like that. Elvin Wood will be pleased, a uh, human Wood, sorry, will be pleased from the Man of the player for additional armor. But as long as the pikemen are around, the Rohirrim, they have limitations. They can't do much, you know what I'm saying? That's why you first of all gotta take care of the enemy pikemen, which is easier said than done, because he has also lancers or archers to keep your soldiers in a, in a, in a checkpoint. The lancer is going down to the Rohirrim archers. Tower guards were creeping this and they are now moving on. They might also creep the trolley eventually. Gondor Knights are getting barely away. He's saying Lel. What happened? I don't know what's happening. Or oh, did he actually ride it down into the pikeman? I don't know. I think he lost the Rohirrim or something. Assail the enemies of Gondor. Enemies of Gondor. 450 command points and 400 command, 500 command points now for man. And 8 power points collected against 6. So it's pretty evenish. I mean, Sauron is like a small lead, but it's not that efficient, you know? It depends all on the on the micro with the Gondor Knights and Rohirrim. That's very important. You gotta keep them alive, no matter what. Rallying Call is gonna be used in the middle of the fight. Tower Guards, they are not buffed, and they will eventually lose the fight against Lorian Warriors anyway. They get smoked, actually. The Gondor Knights, they seem they are a bit slower than the Lancers. They are also getting additional movement speed when they are level 5. They will get they will have to like the like the catch potential, you know. They will be able to outrun you and fight against you. Okay, the Malone tree is gonna be barely protected. One more trample is required to kill them before they can finish off the Malone tree level 2. Again, they get 100 command points from it. Keeping this protected is very important for elves. 600 command points against 650. But he has 10 power points, 11 power points collected, to be precise. We have Faramir. Look at him, guys. Just a regular guy who's trying to make his daddy proud, who is trying to show his quality. And no heroes, like, maybe Legolas could be nice, you know, I don't know. I mean, the, the thing is, he doesn't have that much money, you know what I'm saying? But he might get very soon. The one weakness of the Elven faction is the lack of eco boost. Like, man, for example, can get the Grand Harvest. You have also Outlaw from Elma. That means you can get money for killing enemy units, right? You can get additional money from the farms, but the Elven faction, they lack in this department. They have no pillage, no eco-boosting thing like Dwarven Riches, Industry, Scavenger, nothing like that. Okay. So, t Pikes are in the Porcupine Formation to withstand damage. Archers are taking care of the soldiers, no problemo. Farami is in the middle of the map. Level 6 
level 7 is required to give you the same armor like you would get from the human wood. But the brothers of Gondor, they are able to stack their leadership. So Boromir gives you damage and Faramir gives you armor. The combination of the brothers, the captains of Gondor, can actually be quite efficient. Tom Bombadil was special summoned from the Man of the West player for the defensive purposes. The lances are getting behind the farm. They are trying to commit against it. They should be able to take it down, no problemo. Faramir is fighting and, you know, catching those pikes all the time, getting more and more experience. Has the warning arrow now. Just like Haldir, he has also the chance to fight with Sword. Tom Bombadil, Sonic Song. But doesn't even kill those Lorien warriors. I'm expect I was expecting this to deal a bit more damage, but it's okay. And almost 8 power points collected for Ave after running call in the far side. So Lancers are actually getting away barely from the Rohirrim. Rohirrim are committing now fully. This fight looks kind of favorable for the Man of the West faction player Sauron. Should be able to win this fight. Farami in the middle, kind of cleaning up all the pikemen. And at this point, I think Ave starts feeding the enemy hero. And the enemy Rohirrim and gives them more and more strength and powerful you know power 700 command points for else but he has barely any units around and the first hero is going to be actually Legolas so Legolas against Farami I believe Farami has not a, not a chance which kind of makes sense boom warning arrow against the builder doesn't even kill him Farami poor guy shoot at him guys you see Far he's chunking him hook strike pew nice hook strike but he's actually surrounded like, the horses are dealing so much damage to heroes like Legolas. Farsight is going to be used. Trampling. Heal is going to be used from the Man of the West play on the Rohirrim. Uh, Rohirrim are getting killed still by Legolas. He's all about to hit level 2. More levels means more DPS. Does he have heal from the spellbook? He can go for it. Because Legolas is taking so much damage from Faramir. Faramir's warning arrow is still on cooldown. More lanes are coming now. They might be able to catch Faramir off guard. But Faramir has the chance to become also a knight of Gondor and get mounted on his horse and get out. If he doesn't, he will be crushed. Faramir. Daddy, Denethor is coming, and Faramir, no more heal, will be taken down. 11 power points collected for elves. Legolas is getting more and more experience. The Malone tree is going to be protected for now. The builder is also getting in safety. The Gondor Knights are falling apart. Tom Bombadil special summon will also be unlocked now from the elven player. Ave Have, 750 command points against 800. Faramir is down. There was the only hero from the Man of the West player so far. But maybe we will need something stronger than that. Maybe we will need the King LSR himself. Maybe we will need the Maya. Maybe all you gotta need is a wizard to turn this game around. The farm level 2 is open in an open area. They are buffed from the rolling call. And unfortunately for Man of the West, that means minus 100 command points. He's gonna turn on the Rohirrim? No. Rohirrim are actually smoking them. He's gonna commit, keep committing on it. It's a risky move. The Roh ah, dude, the Rohirrim are actually hitting like a truck, dude. That's what I like to see. Well, the Rohirrim, though... <laughs> Look, he's like, what is going on? Ah, yeah, I get it. Rohirrim. He's like, Ectelion. He's flaming Ectelion about that. Hey, El Rohir, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. All right. 310 viewers, guys. Let's go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Means a lot. Seven power points collected for the Elven, for the Man of the West player. And the Elven player has four power points collected. Tom Bombadil is still available for Ave Have. 850 command points in total. Legolas, I believe, is still remaining on the field. There he comes. Level 3, almost. Again, means train archers. Sorry, I was hitting the microphone. Um, you can level up the archers every single time. We ride from Rivendell. Okay. So. Oh, hit him. They are fighting this. They should not take the fight. And kind of back and forth game. It's pretty equal, as you can see and tell. And that's also kind of... Mirrored in the in the scoreboard of the game. It's 3-3 boys. It's pretty even in the best of nine. Tom Bombadil can still have a huge impact on this kind of battles. You know, I believe at this point, Avi has to force a fight. He has to force a fight and use the momentum he has into the Bombadil summon advantage. Remember, the Bombadil from Man of the West play is still on cooldown for a bit. So he can't use it again, at least not for the next fight. If the fight happens, obviously, in the next three to five minutes. Farami is back on the menu too, level almost 5. Level 7 is actually a pretty decent power spike because in most situations the armor buff is more important than the damage buff. So 35% increased buff actually seems pretty nice. Especially because you have also the chance to use Rallying Call for additional damage. So you have damage and also 35% increased armor to make your units really, really strong. Farami taking so much damage but he also one-shots those lances, no problemo. Getting almost level 6 of that. One more level is required. Tom Bombadil was special summoned defensively. But the thing is, summoning Tom Bombadil against horses is not the best call. However, he was still able to keep this level 3 Malone tree protected. I think that was the main 
goal. Tom Bombadil is not even the Sonic song, but he does need it. Like, you barely deal damage to him. Gem Studios! Thanks for the primers for four months, my dude. Thanks for the huge spot to the channel. Means a lot. Champ Studios just resubscribed for four months. Ahoy. Love the channel at Beyond Standards. Thank you so much, man. Love you, too. Thanks for the huge spot. So, Legolas is level 3 now. And Tom Bombadil is on cooldown. 12 power points collected after Tom Bombadil. 975 for Avi. And 700 for men. Men are actually... Men are weak, as Elrond would like to see. There will be no down for men. The Barracks is coming up. He lost the Barracks even. But he has Grand Harvest. So you can see this animation around the level 3 farms. He's getting a lot of value from it. But is it enough? Do you have enough strength to actually burst down Legolas before he keeps poking you all the time? Before he actually keeps, you know, kind of crushing your army all the time? That's the big question. I think you need a bit of, you need like a stronger unit. Maybe archers, like, you know, rangers from a safe distance. Maybe Boromir could be a nice choice. Legolas is chasing down those Rohirrim, being annoying. You know what I'm saying? Because he knows they are badly damaged. They are dealing so much damage to the Malone tree. Level 4 Rohirrim, but they are getting still one-shotted by Legolas. Level 4, getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Look at this. Quick up, Sauron. It's too late, maybe. Okay. So, basically, we have almost 15 power points for Ave After the Tom Bombadil summon. Whoa, guys. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. That's what I like to see, boys. Let's go. Grandmaster, thanks for, the for tuning in. Love seeing this game. Great game. Thank you so much, man. You know, we are hosting tournaments, events to try to keep the activity as, as high as possible. And we will also have like a $1,000 tournament very soon. Everybody is able to participate. Gandalf is prepped until he's level 5. Or 4, rather. Eagle summon will be unlocked. And can they actually kill Gandalf? They will try, definitely. Gandalf. They don't hurt Gandalf. He has also the shield bubble for the worst case scenario. To get a huge shield and absorption of the damage. But that's the thing. You need to stop them from, from acting. Like, Boromir could be a nice choice. Use the shield bubble. He's going to use it. He doesn't have heal, does he? He has heal. Boom! Level 3. Just like that. Gandalf. Heal is going to be used. Put something. Put him in the tower or something. Can you not put him in the tower? <laughs> I don't know. The eagles, they are actually crushing Gandalf. Use lightning sword on them. Oh, the, the, oh my goodness. He's chasing. He's committing. The eagles are dying to the towers, though. No? I am hurt. I'm hurt. The shield bubble is on cooldown. Obviously, you can't spam it. I think the eagle is not going to make it, right? It's a 15 power open investment to kill Gandalf. And if Gandalf doesn't die, it's a good situation for Man of Twest. But look in the minimap in the meantime, guys. Legolas is coming now. I think this Legolas' goal is to hoax strike Gandalf. Eagle is down. Gandalf is going to recover slowly but surely over time. The ranger special summon was used defensively. And he's like Gandalf. He's flaming Ectelion once again because Gandalf is beefy. And Gandalf is strong as he is supposed to be. And ladies and gentlemen, Gandalf is level 3. Lightning Sword is going to be used and missed. What is he aiming at? Is Gandalf drunk? That's the question. And I can understand your question. I think so. Same. I think the same. Legolas should be fine. Level 5, Rohirrim. Don't lose them into the pikemen. He's going to pay attention. Rohir uh, the rangers are actually crashing the pikemen in seconds. 700 command points for man. He has still the Tom Bombadil special summon available. Gandalf needs a bit more levels. He needs to be at least level 4 to be able to get mounted on his shadow effects. And elves, they are kind of falling apart. But we have Elrond, also known as Agent Smith in the business. Sounds are not working. I know. I don't know why they are not working, to be honest with you guys. Sorry for that. I will try to fix them, but not in the middle of the game. After this game, I can try to fix them. So, Legolas is almost level 5. But Gandalf is here. And he never. I take it back. He can even get mounted when he's level 3. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Because in Rise of the Witch, you need to be level 4 to be mounted. Okay, so builders are getting revived, and all of a sudden the Elven play is turning into a turtle situation. Elrond offers you high tier leadership and also Atelas for additional sustain for not only heroes but also nearby allied units and hordes. And leadership high tier, it means you know armor and damage combined. Eagle summon is on cooldown. Will be on long, long time. Uh, you know, on cooldown for a long time. Thirteen power points collected for the man of the best player. Boom, sun on your face. I always catch those. 
In Gandalf, Mifrandia, the Grey Rider is level 4. In the second, he gets level 5, ladies and gentlemen. I am Gandalf the White, and I come back to you now at the turn of the tide. Do it. Two wizards. Don't run into the pikeman, though. Tom Bombadillo, you Sonic Zone to do it. Sonic Zone. Gandalf is trying to get even more levels. I mean, he has the shield bubble for the worst case scenario. Dumbest patch ever. <laughs> God, the white tower. Dude, Gandalf, level 4. Level 7 is required for the Easter Light, which also chunks enemy heroes, by the way. Beam of Light. The damages enemies. Tom Bombadil is singing in the background. 16 power points. What can he do for with it? 1,000 command points for elves. Elrond is creeping the Vogue layer. It doesn't deal too much damage to the buildings, actually. Thranduil doesn't even do damage. What do I do? <laughs> He's like, how can I deal with Gandalf? That's the big question. Should I delete Fortress? <laughs> yeah, Gandalf, you know, troublemaker, dude. Gandalf is a troublemaker, guys. He's a wizard, you know what I'm saying? Like, he is like OP in the films, too. Elrond is level 3. <laughs> He's like, play. <laughs> Gandalf is level 4. Level One more level, boys. Use it. Do it. Phew. Oh, he's actually aiming for, uh, you know, the Rohirrim. Where is Thranduil at? I think he didn't go for Thranduil. And Thranduil needs some levels on him. And Avi is upset about this patch, boys. Avi is upset, you know what I'm saying? He's like, he he's used to a pleb Gandalf in the Rise of the Witch King for many, many years. You know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't, he, he's not used to see Gandalf in the game. Um, but here, when Gandalf is coming, and I like this personally. I mean, it's my personal preference. You know, I want, and also in the Rise of the Witch King, they buffed Gandalf, by the way. The Easter Light is now faster up on the field. Gandalf is cheaper, so it's more affordable. But the thing is, that if you ever sacrifice so much time and momentum into saving up this much money for a very efficient hero, then he should be also a hero who has an impact on the game. You know what I'm saying? Like Saruman, for example, for Isengard, or, or the Drag Dragon Lord for the Goblin Faction. Like, those heroes, they are, they are supposed to have impact. 23 power points. What is he aiming for? 1,000 command points for men and 600 for Ave Ave in this Elven faction. 8 power points collected. You cannot chase Gandalf like that. Obviously, Elrond is fast, but not fast enough. As long as Gandalf is mounted on his Shadow Fax, he cannot be catched by Elrond. And he's really close to... I mean, watch the animation now when he's going to get white. Like, you see the picture. Like, he's also his design and mo model is going to be changed completely. He has even the heavy armor purchase now on this Rohirrim to make them even beefier. Faramir is level 9, by the way. Didn't even notice. We bring spears from Mithlon. We bring spears from Mithlon. So Legolas is strong, but Legolas is more and less strong than against units, not against heroes that much. He's actually molding, guys. How is molding? <laughs> what are we building? Tom Bombadil summon is available for the for the Elven player too. The farm is getting demolished by Sauron. 425 command points only for Ave. Gandalf is showing his quality, trying to show his quality. Faramir, the captain. Boom! Why cancel? Oh, nice shot. Excellent. Boom! And level 5. And he is Gandalf the White. Look at him, boys. He's shining bright like a diamond. Look at Even Shadow Fax is beautiful. 5 power points. Uh, I mean, level 5, Easter Light, level 7. And Water of Power, obviously, level 10. And crazy animation of Water of Power, by the way. That looks awesome. Level 4 Elrond has leadership unlocked. Level 6 is required for the whirlwind. And, uh, you know, he's like double, uh, Witch King and Gandalf. And Avi's last famous word is like flaming the <laughs> patch and, you know, kind of suiciding or surrendering the game. You felt it. You felt the differential, you know? And maybe we can feel the differential once again. This time in the hands of the Red Man of the West player, Avi Havi, the bottom side against the blue Mordor player. The first time we see Mordor tonight, by the way, from Sauron. You have seen goblins, you have seen elves, you have seen men, you have seen Isengard, and even elves. And the last faction which, were, which was missing in the series was the Mordor faction. Two slaughterhouses coming up from Mordor into the Orc Pit. And great Eye of Sauron is scouting and seeing everything through walls and flesh. And the builder is looking to build a offensive barracks. But the Eye is upon us. He will be able... Was he able to see him, actually? I don't know. I'm not sure. The Barracks is coming up now. Let's see the Eye of Sauron. The Mordor player is scouting, scouting, scouting. Yeah, he saw it, I think. Yeah, he saw it. Yeah, yeah. He definitely saw it. <laughs> okay, he knows the Barracks is here. So the, the question is now, what can he do about this Barracks? 
because that's a very risky move, right? I think you want to go for an early pressure against Mordor, knowing the fact that... Um, funny Funeral, thanks for the, for the subbing for the first time to the channel, man. Appreciate that. Really means a lot to me. Thanks for the huge support to the channel. Means a lot. Funny Funeral just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew, indeed. Funny. Into the Gondor soldiers, ladies and gentlemen. So Gondor soldiers are stronger than the Orc warriors, of course, obviously. And uh, that's a very greedy oh, opening. Build me an army worthy of Mordor. Soldier and I like the choice. Orc archers are the best call, I believe, you know, because you can kind of bully them before they can reach out to your slaughterhouses and buy and stall time. Oh, that's a bad placement of the of the human wood. I think it's not the worst case because this way this can be used to defend this barracks a bit, you know, better. But the question is, are you able to deal damage during all this time? Tavern for the Corsairs, they cost 400 each, so they are not cheap. But I think they are great against structures. And I think that's the main reason why he's recruiting them to be able to take down the barracks as soon as possible. During all this time, the farms here have zero protection. He's building another uh, for, uh, number four farm. But I think in order to be able to counter the orcs and the orc archers as well as the Corsairs, you need to eventually make a transition into the Gondonites. From the stable. We will see about that. I see. So I see you. But I, by the way, if you don't know, is a high tier leadership. So it gives you armor, damage, and combat experience all in one. The slaughterhouse is gonna be committed against and will be taken down. Great move here from Ave Havi, destroying one of the most important. And early slaughterhouses from the Mora player. More orc archers, orcs, corsairs. But no movement kills yet. No Easterlings yet. The eye is gonna be still used for. What is this actually? What is this three on the? What is going on here? It's like a visual bug. Do you guys see this? It's weird. Um, no stable yet for the man of the West player. Corsairs are sprinting. They are so extremely fast. And they are also dealing great amount of damage to the buildings, by the way. And we, I mean, nobody is using firebombs. I don't know why. But even without, without the firebombs, remember, this is a level... Uh, this is a 2,000 HP farm, right? It's going to be still taken down in no time. They get almost a full level of that. Immediately changing to all ground stands to minimize the damage income from the fortress. And they will just keep Soldier moving on. And that's the weakness of this strategy from Man of the West. Because you, will, you leave yourself... Very open for a potential counter-attack if you do that, but he did. Because you have no barracks here, you have zero production of the units. It means he can do that over and over again. He can just pass through your barracks and get to your own fortress and take down every single surrounding farm for free. And you can't do anything about that. At least not for now. There is another barracks, by the way, from Man of the West player. So he's building double barracks offensively, both of them. This one is going to be protected for now against the orcs. They are clamping very smartly here, actually. Hard to target. Look at them. You see? Like, only four units are able to attack them at the same time. That's why it takes so long time to kill those orcs. More units are coming. Orc archers on the field. Uh, these Corsairs are diving into deep against the barracks. Again, they are a great counter to the enemy structures, but I guess they are not very strong against soldiers in a one-on-one -on -one situation. They are a good counter to the tower guards, though. They can beat tower guards, but they cannot beat the soldiers of Gondor. 400 command points for Gondor and 400 command points for Men of the uh, for Mordor. Okay, so again, stable is required because there is nothing on the field right now from the Mordor player that can that could be able to deal with the Gondor knights or Rohirrim. So we'll just spam like uh, he's playing the Men of the West faction like it would be a Goblin faction or or Mordor faction. So we speak, we see lots of Gondor soldiers being recruited. They cost what 200 each. They are still much more expensive than orcs, but talking about the orcs, he lost the orc pet. So he has no more orc production anytime soon. He has orc archers, still a couple of them left on the field. But again, you know, the Corsairs of Umbar, they are not the best, they are not the best against soldiers. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a Nazgul could be a nice choice. But again, I don't think Mordor has lots of money. His power points are looking good. He has nearly nine power points collected after the Eye of Sauron. The Corsairs level three, they are able to destroy another farm. And they are also able to get, fire, you know, forge plates and the, uh, the banner, but they cannot buy or get the heavy armor. That's not possible. 
Um, nine power points collected for Mordor. And Man of the West has 450 command points and only five power points collected. So he can go for a heal or rallying call. And remember, the rallying call is able to stack with the human wood. So this way you get additional armor and damage at the same time, which can be a great tool to go for a big commitment. For example, to take down the enemy tavern, if possible. But he's pressuring, ignoring all the units and trying to deal just damage to the slaughterhouses over and over and over again. The farm is going to be spotted from Sauron. He will be able to destroy the farm from the one of the player and still no stable, right? No. Still spamming soldiers left and right. Soldier battalion standing by. Soldier battalion standing Soldier by. Battalion standing by. You will hear that all no. night, guys. This one is going to be taken down as well. Ah, oh, that's a barricade. Okay, he went actually for the barricade. And barricade is pretty underrated. I don't know why, but I think it's a great defensive tool. With a kind of low cooldown. That means you can summon it over and over again. They are permanent, by the way. They have no time remaining. So you can have, like, you know, depends on the length of the game. You can have, like, 100 of them on the field at the same time. I just found you on YouTube. This is so cool. I thought I'm the only one who plays this masterpiece. Hey, man, Ma uh, Marlo Brando. Thanks for your kind words. I'm happy that you found us. And also, thank you very much for tuning in into the live stream and also being in the chat. Really means a lot to me, especially when I get the chance to meet people from YouTube in the live stream. I'm grateful. Thank you. And yeah, you are definitely not alone. And if you guys want to be connected with other people from Battle for Middle-Earth community, the best place to do that is joining our Discord. We have almost 7,000 members. And everybody is playing BFME, <laughs> at least from time to time. So be connected, look for games, find games in all Battle for Middle-Earth games, BFME 1, 2, and Rise of the Witch King. And stay always up to date. Human Wood, yeah, that's what it's called. You see that? Human Wood. You see? I'm not lying, d -Mac. It's called Human Wood. Uh, the stable, Gondorites. For, for the glory of Gondor, it might be a little bit too late. He might lose a lot. The build is going to get in safety. 350 command points. He actually lost a lot of his farms. 9 power points only after the human wood. And we have 1 power point collected after the barricade. War chance and the Eye of Sauron. You can see the power point differential. Mordor is definitely leading in this department. This is the first. That's the first best of nine. I mean, the second best of nine is op always optional. It only happens if Sauron loses the first best of nine. If Sauron wins the first best of nine, the tournament is officially over. And Sauron is going to become the champion of the Warm Tongue tournament. However, if Ave Habe wins the best of nine first, Sauron gets another life. Because he didn't lose a series yet. So we would see another best of nine. Only if Sauron loses. And remember, it's a cash prize tournament. It means if Sauron wins that, he will get 60 bucks. Avi will still get 30 bucks. And Inumara, who has the third, who has the third space, third place, will get $10. So we are not sending anybody empty home who is able to reach the top three. Human Wood has been placed once again. But remember, the Mordor player is able to cover this Human Wood with his own tainted land if he wants to. However, he has not the power points yet. Hobbit Summon will be used as well. And Hobbit Summon, they have now also the armor buff. Avi is calling it GG, boys. He's demolishing his fortress because he kept losing. You see, that's what I was trying to say. He has nothing around his own fortress for the first five to eight minutes into the game. 